We're going to use these two sponges as models to represent the soil. They're similar in that they both have a solid matrix, in this case the fibers of the sponge, and in the case of the soil, the actual sand, silt, and clay particles, and in between the particles, in between the fibers, there are spaces or voids. These voids can be filled with either air or water. We're going to start by getting these sponges completely wet, saturated. And then, once they're completely wetted, we're going to lift them out of the water and observe how water flows from those sponges under the influence of gravity, or what we would call gravity potential. The water flows more rapidly from the sponge with the larger pores. At some point, the water will stop flowing from both uh, sponges, and at this point, it's analogous to a condition in soil that we call field capacity. The amount of water that the soil can hold against the pull of gravity, or in this case, the amount of water the sponge can hold against the pull of gravity. The sponge is not dry, however, and both of these sponges still have some water. Some of that water uh, can be squeezed out, uh, and in the soil, some of that water can be absorbed, taken up by plants. In this case, we're going to observe which of these sponges, the one with the large pores in my right hand, or the one with the small pores in my left, holds the most water. So we have So we have our graduated cylinder here, and our sponge, and as a plant, we start squeezing the, taking the water out of the soil, or squeezing the water out of the sponge. At some point, I've squeezed all the water out of the sponge that I can, and similarly, at some point, a plant removes all the water out of the soil that it can. We call that point the wilting point. The sponge is still not dry, however. Water is being absorbed to or held to the particles, the fibers in the sponge. In the same way, a, a soil that is dry to a plant is not dry because there's still water attached to the soil particles. Let's take our other sponge, the one with the smaller pores, and let's find out how much water is in it. Again, the plant starts to obtain water, and the water comes from the plant initially to the plant initially relatively easily, but the drier the soil gets, the drier the sponge gets in our case, the harder it is to get more water out of it. Not all plants have the same ability to extract water, and so where one plant might stop at this much water, a desert plant might be able to pull a little bit more water out of it yet. Now, at this point, both of my sponges are as dry as I can make them by squeezing them. And again, our analogy for the soil is that it would be as dry as, as it can be from plants extracting water. If we compare now, uh, which soil, which of the sponges held more water, the one with the, against the flow of gra pull of gravity, the one with the large pores, or the one with the small pores, we can see that the one with the small pores held considerably more water uh, than the one with the large pores. About 18 milliliters or so of water on this side with the large pores, and maybe uh, almost 26 milliliters in the case of the pore sponge with the small pores. The amount of water that we can squeeze out of the sponge or the amount of water that a plant can extract from the soil between what's held against the pull of gravity and what remains in the soil uh, held to the soil particles, that amount of water we call the, the, the available water. So the water held in the soil between field capacity, after gravity has drained all that it can, and wilting point, when the plants can no longer remove water, is called the available water, or plant available water. And in this case, these two sponges of roughly the same size, there's a difference of eight milliliters of water in what we would call plant available water.